So, Gatart, can I request all of you to go unmute, please? And in case you have any questions or uh, comments at that time, you can uh, unmute. So, this is a friendly introduction for machine learning. It's a uh, session number two. Uh, we had uh, session number one of a week before. And I really would like to revise what we uh, discussed last time. But uh, in case uh, you were uh, part of that particular session, well and good. Even if you are not, no worries. I am to cover those slides very, uh, very quickly in the next four to five, and then you will be up to the mark. So in the four to five minutes, I am going to uh, cover some summary for the last session. So, uh, guys, in uh, traditional programming, what typically happens is you know we provide data and program to our computer and the uh, Output, but in running the output is the program and input is uh, your data and uh, objective of that particular data. So in learning, uh, output uh, uh, is program actually. This is we uh, discussed this time. Uh, we discussed that machine learning has uh, three different components. Very first one is representation, second one evaluation, and the third one is optimization. We'll have a quick look into these three. Uh, things representation uh, basically it, uh, done in decision tree uh, base Markov nets neural network and FPM. so uh, during last uh, session we didn't know what is decision tree uh, SVM and other things but today we are going to cover all these things so that you be aware how the representation is getting done using uh, machine learning this was uh, evaluation for that we have a couple of things for example square error entropy Priority, posterior probability, and uh, cost function. We have to see uh, squared error today, and if possible, then priority and posterior probability as well. The third uh, optimization. So, um, optimization, uh, there are three different kinds of optimization in machine learning. Very first one is constraint optimization, that is really done using linear programming. Second one is convex optimization, that's using gradient descent, wherein we apply the cost function and discuss what is the cost function. It's actually the difference between actual and predicted value. And the, and the last one is combinatorial optimization. So during session number one, uh, it was just an uh, overlook, you know, and uh, we didn't go into the details of what this optimization means, but uh, today we are going to cover all those so that, you know, constraint and uh, convex optimization is very clear to all of you. We are going to uh, touch base on to combinatorial uh, optimization as part of Today's session. Uh, discussed last time uh, different types of machine learning. Very first one is supervised machine learning, wherein we provide or feed input as uh, output both. We have uh, seen the example of weather.com, which, uh, you know, uh, based on uh, temperature, humidity, and wind in direction, it predicts the uh, for upcoming week or days or for a month. So, in supervised learning, we used to have input as well as the output. Output both. Um, type of machine learning is unsupervised learning, wherein we do not have output, rather have input only. For example, you know, uh, if we feed a uh, computer a uh, cup of uh, uh, fruits, and based on their taste, color, we want to determine what kind of fruit it is, whether it is apple or banana, then it, it, it causes unsupervised learning. The supervised uh, uh, learning, wherein we have input and uh, a little bit of output, you know, not entirely, uh, all the outputs are not present into semi-supervised learning. As uh, reinforcement learning, we have taken a chase. Uh, what really happens as part of reinforcement learning is, you know, we reward or penalize and every move. Uh, we had discussion about all these four types of uh, uh, machine learning last time. It's just a quick uh, summary. So supervised learning, it used to have input and output both, but in unsupervised learning, we have input only. Semi-supervised learning, input and output. Reinforcement learning works based on rewards and uh, penalty. A uh, question of uh, five different sp uh, steps for machine learning. Very first one is, you know, you should understand the domain you should have some prior knowledge about the data, and you should uh, certainly know what your goal is. So that's step number one. Step number two uh, is uh, data cleaning. This is the major step, and uh, uh, 
uh, as part of data cleaning, what we do, first we, uh, you know, uh, determine what is our training set and uh, uh, test set, follow 80 and 20 pull, wherein 80% of our data goes into the training set and 20% becomes our test model. In coming language like R, uh, we split a method which, which does that. This is data scaling. We do have scale function in R, which, you know, uh, scale the data. Today we are going to see what data scaling uh, means and how, how we can do it. I do have code base for that. Then number three is developing model. How to develop the model? Again, today we are going to cover. There are five different uh, ways of developing the model. We are going to cover each one of them. Uh, step number four is interpreting result. Once you run your machine learning algorithm, it provides you certain output. Based on that output, how you can predict the things that you're going to see. So for that, I, I will be covering R squared and registered R squared, which helps to interpret the result. We are going to say it today. The number five is again, you know, consolidate, creating your uh, uh, machine learning algorithm and uh, applying it for uh, discovery of the knowledge base. A discussion uh, for R versus Python, which language is better? There is no, you know, certain answer. Both the languages are good or has a steep learning curve, uh, but with one line of code, you can do a lot. In R, R is written by a statistician and it has got a very nice graphic features as well. Uh, well uh, Python is, again, you, you know, it's open source and it's multi-purpose one. A uh, part of Python, you can work on to Anaconda and Jupyter uh, Notebook. You used to have uh, VSTS for .NET code. So these are all the things which we uh, discussed uh, uh, last time, and uh, there was one very uh, good question asked by uh, Godwin, uh, which algorithm should be utilized under which circumstances? So I have a nice slide for that. We'll go through uh, with that particular question also. Uh, but before that, I would like to cover uh, the companies who are using machine learning in cool ways nowadays. So very, you know, uh, what typically this uh, uh, website does is, you know, it captures images and it tags it, uh, whether it's interior or exterior or whether it's a kitchen related. So if you have, uh, you know, images 10, 20 or 100 images, it is easy to identify it. But uh, let's assume that you have what, tens of millions of, uh, uh, you know, uh, JPGs uh, or images, you can, uh, you know, tag them, whether it is, uh, you know, interior, exterior, or uh, no, other views of that particular restaurant. But the AP is using machine learning algorithm, and it does it uh, partly with the 95% uh, accuracy. We have Pinterest company, which actually uses machine learning for spam moderation, and also they use it, uh, use it heavily for uh, uh, content uh, discovery. And also, they are using machine learning algorithm to, uh, you know, Reduce the email which is getting sent by to their uh, customer. Third example is Facebook. You know, they're using uh, chat uh, chat bots actually, and all those chat bot army is written using machine learning. Uh, Facebook using machine learning to filter out spam, and also if there is any poor quality content, that machine learning algorithm identifies it and uh, remo uh, removes it. Uh, the for Twitter, uh, whenever you take them into Twitter, you know, uh, based on machine learning algorithm, each and every tweet is getting scored, and they utilize it for uh, promoting those uh, tweets. So this is how Twitter is using uh, machine learning nowadays. The next, uh, Google uh, has come up with a neural network when, you know, they have developed a, you know, machine which actually drains. So whatever image you see it over here, you know, all these images are created by a machine learning algorithm called a neural network. So uh, this is done by Google. They have created a machine which actually dreams. So the next company, it's a, you know, e-commerce retail company, and they have come up with a machine learning algorithm to uh, improve their sales. So sometimes what happens, you know, we go to shopping uh, sites, but we literally don't know uh, what to buy and what we need. Sometimes we just want to spend the money, but we literally don't know what we're searching for. This particular company has come up with a, you know, machine learning algorithm, which 
helps uh, their end user to serve, uh, you know to buy the thing uh, uh, Baidu, it's a, a Chinese firm. Sir, we know Bing and uh, Google only for search. We don't use uh, we don't use much for Baidu. I'm sure whether you guys have seen Baidu or not, but believe me, Baidu is uh, taking a great leap into machine learning. Uh, they have come up with a speech recognition, uh, which con uh, speech recognition algorithm, which converts a speech into text and then text into data. And then again, they convert that particular data into text, and then that text is getting converted back into the voice. The good, good thing is, you know, if you have an ascent, then it will speak up into an ascent only. And you will feel like, you know, it's your, almost your voice uh, which is coming back to you. This is what uh, Badu is currently doing. Uh, it's a fantastic algorithm. They have almost developed it, and they call it as uh, uh, deep voice. I'm just give a couple of uh, examples so that you can uh, understand, you know, where exactly machine learning can, can be used. The last one is uh, IBM. So it has come up with a uh, Watson uh, package. It's a licensed version, which is uh, getting deployed to multiple uh, hospitals in US and other locations as well. It's one of the best, uh, I would say, you know, machine learning algorithm, which is packaged in such a way so that it can be licensed. So very first licensed version of machine learning uh, algorithm, what typically it does, you know, it, it identifies uh, or diagnoses uh, certain types of uh, cancers and uh, it do analyze it uh, uh, in a great way. And that's why nowadays Watson is uh, uh, getting a lot of uh, traction. It's a package uh, software. So before I go into the question which Godwin has asked last time, you know, uh, under which circumstances uh, uh, which algorithm should be used? Uh, any any questions so, so far for this uh, session or the things which we have discussed so far? I'll take four to and pause. Okay. In question, I will uh, move, move forward. So, learning guys, we have different types of algorithms. Uh, is a classification algorithm. So, if you ask you. Uh, to predict the thing, whether it's A or B, for example, whether it's apple or banana, then uh, you are very sure that you know what you want, and then you can go for classification algorithm. But like to see if whether a particular transaction in a transaction history, um, you know, whether it's bad or good, and then you can go for anomaly detection algorithm. Uh, all the bank and companies or credit card is doing this kind of uh, algorithm. Uh, for uh, fraud detection. Then is in case, you know, if somebody asks you what is the apartment of the value in a in certain area, uh, and if that happens, then you should go for a regression algorithm. Uh, if you would like to organize the data, then we should go for clustering algorithm. And uh, if uh, we have to determine what is my next step, you know, if if that is the case, then reinforcement learning. So typically, reinforcement learning is getting utilized into game like uh, chess, uh, where in computer itself, uh, you know, reward its own moves, whether it is uh, penalized or whether it should be uh, rewarded. So game like chess is based on uh, uh, reinforcement learning. We are going to see what is classification, anomaly, regression, clustering, and uh, uh, reinforcement learning is all about. algorithm you know the of algorithm are used to classify a record for example uh, uh, yeah, if you ask a person uh, uh, whether there is a court side or not answer finite it could be yes or no and if you ask computer a question you know whether uh, I should go to work or not today or could be yes no or maybe so if the answer is finite then we should go for classification algorithm. And also, if there are two answers, then it becomes two-class algorithm. But if there are more than two answers, then we should go for uh, multi-class uh, algorithm. 
I'm clear on to classification uh, algorithm. Uh, in case if you guys have any questions, feel free to you know pitch in. Uh, I will take a pause and we can have a quick discussion. And also, it's not only me. There are other folks also who who knows machine learning. For example, you know Sangha and Godwin. They also know it. Uh, if they are available on the call, certainly uh, I mean I welcome them to you know uh, come forward and uh, put in their thoughts here. Still okay, jump in, guys. Our next one is uh, anomaly detection algorithm. So what it does is, you know, it identifies a particular pattern. And in case if something goes wrong with that pattern, then it alerts the system. For example, here, we have all the blue faces, right? And somewhere in between, um, last certain uh, is a red face. Anomaly detection algorithm, it identifies that particular uh, activity and it alerts the system. This kind of algorithm, you know, typically credit card or a bank company is, uses it for, uh, you know, uh, fraud detection. The next one, regression uh, algorithm. So uh, regression algorithm is all about calculating, you know, numeric values. If somebody asks you a question, what should be the, you know, what will be the temperature uh, for uh, tomorrow, that's a numeric value, right? So in those conditions, we should go for regression algorithm. And also we can uh, calculate how much discount we should give to a particular item when there is a sale going on so that my you know, profit is uh, uh, not badly impacted. Uh, for this kind of scenario, we should go for uh, uh, regression algorithm. So question, I have got almost 88 uh, slides. I'm not sure how many uh, slides I will be able to cover, but I will speed up a little bit. Feel free to pitch in, feel free to stop me in case if you have any uh, questions. The next string algorithm. So actually this uh, string algorithm, what it does, it creates different groups or clusters uh, based on those group or cluster, you know, we can predict the uh, behavior of a particular event. Uh, see that, uh, you know, how that is typically done. But this clustering or grouping is a most important activity in uh, data science nowadays, and that's why, you know, clustering algorithms are uh, very, very much useful. Uh, the reinforcement uh, learning. Again, here, uh, I have given two examples over here. Very first one is uh, Chase, then uh, you know, computer has to decide whether that uh, particular move was good or bad. If it is good, then it rewards itself so that next time onwards it remember that I had taken that particular move and uh, that was being rewarded. So I should go forward with that. Uh, but in case if that particular move wasn't uh, good, uh, it penalizes itself and then it uh, uh, makes a log entry saying that, okay, uh, under those kind of situation, that particular move wasn't a good one uh, should not uh, repeat the same. So your algorithm actually, you know, learn from your uh, uh, mistake so that it uh, doesn't get repeated next time. Also, you would like to develop a capture control system. Uh, uh, you know, again, reinforcement uh, algorithm can be pretty much useful over here. So two uh, uh, examples I would uh, like to come back to uh, initial screen. So we have seen so far classification algorithm, second was the anomaly detection algorithm, third was regression, uh, cloning algorithm, and the reinforcement uh, algorithm. The basic five types of algorithm in uh, machine learning, uh, we will see uh, one by one all uh, these algorithms uh, in the oh. next couple of slides. Yes. Uh, any questions so far, guys, or should I move forward? Uh, yes. Yeah. Which okay. algorithm falls under uh, supervised uh, or unsupervised? Yeah. And that's Sangha. And thanks for asking that question. I have a nice slide, and you will see, uh, you will see, you know, which algorithm falls uh, under which uh, particular type of algorithm. The slide uh, will give you that answer. So, uh, uh, any more questions on to this particular slide, guys? Uh, is clear. What is classification algorithm, anomaly, it's fraud detection, regression, clustering, or reinforcement? If I will move forward. Yeah. So your question, uh, Sangha, thanks for asking that question. So 
this and particularly I like this uh, slide because it gives me uh, end to end picture. So at the center we have machine learning. Again, three different types of uh, machine learning. Very one is supervised learning. Second is uh, unsupervised learning, and the third one is reinforcement learning. I'm not any supervised learning over here. So is learning. It's two different parts. One is regression, and one is classification. Under uh, when you should apply a regression related algorithm. In case if you would like to do the uh, weather forecasting, market forecasting, or population growth prediction, then you go forward for the regression related algorithm. Uh, if you would like to uh, retain your customer, or if you would like to do the image classification, or if you would like to go for identity uh, fraud detection, uh, or uh, if there is a need for diagnostics, then you should go for uh, classification related algorithm. The set of uh, uh, machine learning is, you know, unsupervised learning. It has different parts. One is dimensionality uh, reduction, and second one is clustering. So as part of uh, playing, you know, you can come up with a recommender system or you can do the targeted marketing as well. For example, in case if you have uh, developed a particular product and uh, you would like to know your uh, audience, uh, then you can apply your machine learning algorithm and you can identify your uh, user and you can do marketing only for uh, uh, those uh, users. So it helps a lot over there when it comes to clustering. Uh, example for clustering is you know customer segmentation. Uh, now, for example, uh, if there is a bank and they would like to uh, you know do the segmentation for their customer, saying that okay, these are the users uh, who are likely going to continue with us for another five years, and these are the set of users who may leave the bank in next uh, one or two months. So this kind of customer segmentation it comes under uh, clustering, you know, and that is again part of uh, unsupervised. Learning. Type of uh, machine learning algorithm is uh, uh, reinforcement learning. In case if you have artificial intelligence game a requirement, you should go forward for it. And also, uh, a robot navigation, real time decision, it is getting done as part of uh, reinforcement learning. So, does this answer your question, Sang? Uh, yes, yes. This is what I was looking for. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Learning, we, one, we can give an example of uh, Gmail, how it uh, 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 like spam emails, right? Automatically it will put into a spam folder without even um, like asking for the user. So it knows which are uh, spam emails. So that it does uh, uh, without any uh, supervision. So that is one of the examples. Yes, Sangha. And feel free to pitch in. I know that uh, you have a lot of background about machine learning. And uh, if you can pitch in, that will be really great help to me and to the entire audience. Take care. Any question? Yes. Uh, do you get a chance to see where we are implementing machine learning in PwC? Oh, yes. Actually, some use cases. Yeah. Yes. Up to you here, Barbara. Please go ahead. So basically, we wanted to understand some use cases, actually. Maybe we can take it offline. Um, some tax, and, uh, I think they do have some uh, machine learning use cases, okay, where they are using it. Okay. Right, Bhargav. Actually, uh, myself and Dave got into one of the sessions wherein, you know, PwC is working on two machine learning applications. So, uh, uh, so uh, there is a... Mm, Authority vendor actually, they have developed a machine learning algorithm for PwC wherein they are cross verifying last seven years of uh, PwC financial data and they are doing the color coding. So uh, myself and uh, they had a uh, you know discussion with uh, one of the data scientists. Uh, I think he was an architect as well, and uh, they are, they were utilizing uh, Azure uh, machine learning for this kind of uh, color coding. So yes, it is getting utilized in PwC nowadays. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dave is also on the call. Uh, I hope you remember that session when you and me had that, uh, you know, Katie with uh, that event. Okay. Uh, uh, questions onto this uh, uh, screen, guys. If not, then move forward. Okay. So, 
going to cover uh, today is uh, regression model. So there are six type of different uh, regression models. Very first one is simple linear regression. Second one is multiple linear regression. Third one is polynomial. Uh, fourth one is support vector regression. Uh, fifth one is uh, decision tree classification. And sixth one is uh, random forest classification. So six uh, type of uh, machine learning models will will say it in upcoming slides. So regression. Uh, very first one is simple linear regression model. Uh, I hope all of you guys would remember this uh, mathematical formula y equals to b zero plus b one x one. We have learned this formula in our uh, school days. So uh, at that time we just memorized this particular uh, uh, you know equation. But now is the time to actually utilize this uh, equation. Uh, I will uh, let you know how this particular mathematical uh, formula uh, helps and uh, how uh, how it is getting uh, utilized into machine learning. Uh, so, why is the dependent variable? Why it is dependent variable? Because it really depends on b0 and b1 and x1. So here, x1 is our dependent variable and b1 is uh, a quotient. So let's say that you have your uh, data points scattered like this in uh, uh, red uh, marred line. You see data points here, um, all these red plus, let's say you have data distributed like this, and you would like to draw an average line. How, how we can do that? Uh, for drawing that particular line, you know, this particular mathematical uh, formula helps us over here. Let's say that uh, over x-axis we have experience and over y-axis we have salary. So even if you do not have any experience, if you have zero years of experience, still you are bound to get your base salary that is 30k. And that becomes our here. B0 mod into red and it is matching over here with the red circle. So uh, whether you have any uh, experience or not doesn't matter, you are bound to get 30k salary. This is what this uh, B0 means over here. Now B1 is all about, you know, as your experience grows, uh, you get more salary. For example, if experience is going by uh, one year, let's say, then here your salary is getting increased by 10K. So if you have uh, five years of experience, then the increment would be of 50K plus uh, 30K. This is uh, what this, uh, you know, simple uh, linear regression model does. It's straightforward. It is pretty uh, simple. Only thing is that you know your data is distributed like this, and you have straight line. Not all the points are onto this line. You know, on one point is onto this line. That's the drawback of this kind of uh, algorithm. But still, it uh, really helps us to uh, know how the data is uh, distributed and uh, uh, how how it is inclined upwards. How particular line is getting drawn? You know, uh, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, y equals to b0 plus b1 x. But how actually uh, our model works onto it? So it typically does. You know, this of the line. Likewise, our machine learning algorithm draws hundreds of such lines. You know, so this is one of the line. Another could be uh, like this. Uh, the third one could be like that. Fourth one could be like this. Fifth one could be like that. You know, so it draws hundreds of line, and then what it does, it does calculate some of difference between y i and y i cap. What is y i and y i cap? Let us that you know we would like to uh, measure the difference between these two points. So this particular plus sign, uh, just watch my uh, mouse, guys. This particular plus sign becomes y i, and this particular uh, point becomes y hat. So what we need to do, we need to identify the difference between y i and y i can. We for each and every point, and then we sum it. Like if you have hundred lines, we are going to calculate this sum for each every line, and then we will identify which line gives me the minimum difference. And uh, here, this particular line gives you the minimum uh, difference, and that's why you know, we we draw this line. And this particular uh, method is known as ordinary least square method. I mean, uh, we need not to worry how this particular algorithm works. It is just one line of command which we need to uh, feed to our machine learning algorithm. It will what it will do very first pass. It will draw hundreds of such line. Uh, second pass, it will calculate the difference. Third pass, uh, it will you know 
squares between all these points, fourth pass, it will sum that. Fifth part, it will compare for each and every line which one is the minimum. And the minimum, uh, uh, the line which has minimum sum of square differences will become our uh, final uh, line. So this is what, uh, you know, machine learning a model does in background. We need, uh, literally need not to know how it does it, but it's always better to know how that particular line is getting uh, drawn. And this particular method is known as the ordinary least square method. I hope it's clear to all of you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, uh, you know, pitch in. Uh, no, I was just about all this algorithm. Uh, in case if you would like to know how programmatically it, it can be done, so it's just, you know, five to six lines of code which will do these things for you. For example, you know, it's a R code, guys. You may or may not be able to understand, but still, you know, try to understand these things. It's very simple line of code. What I'm going to do over here, very first step is feature scaling. Why do feature scaling? Let's say that you have uh, five data points. Data point number one has the range from one to ten. Data point number two has the range from one to thousand. Uh, data point number three would have range from one to one million. Likewise, uh, we will have different data ranges. So can literally compare those data? No. Until the, the scale is same, we cannot compare those data. So what have to do? We have to make sure that each and every data points, uh, you know, falls between zero to one. And there is only one line of command that is scale function. If you apply the scale function, uh, you know, all this data will be into the single range. And what will be that range? Zero to uh, everything in machine learning is uh, between zero to one. So if you have that particular range, then it is very easy to, you know, compare the data. So the first step is feature scaling that you do it using the scale uh, function. One is uh, just use the LM function that is, you know, apply the regression here. Try to understand this particular uh, uh, line of code. You know, LM is a uh, linear model wherein creating a formula. What is our formula? We wanted to draw salary based on years of experience. This is what we have seen over here. Experience uh, and salary. Experience becomes your x-axis. Uh, uh, salary becomes your y axis. So, one of code, get a formula. What is our formula? Draw salary based on years of experience and what kind of data to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, taken care of. So, you, you will treat the data set. And uh, what is the name of the data set? It is just training, uh, training set. So, in your uh, local directory, it will go and search uh, for the training uh, set data and it will apply this particular. Uh, formula that is salary over years of experience and then you store it as part of ratio and you are done just one line of code and it will draw the uh, you know uh, simple linear regression model for you but uh, if you would like to know that you know uh, whether years of experience but whether it's really uh, significant or not so once you run this particular command you will see that there are three different stars uh, for uh, years of experience. What it says, if there are three stars, that means this particular, uh, uh, you know, data value has highest significance. If there is one star, then it has least significance. So likewise, you know, uh, our code will tell you whether that particular uh, data is of uh, highest significance or uh, is, uh, significance. So uh, all about applying the uh, linear regression model onto training set. Once your training set uh, data is available, what you do, you add the same regression onto new data set. And what is the new data set name? Set. So in the, uh, whenever you have the data set, first you divide it between two things. One is training set and test set. So uh, if you have 100 lines of uh, data items, then 80 lines of data items becomes your training set and uh, 20 lines of items becomes test set. And uh, we call it as the 80 by uh, 20 uh, principle. So what you do, first you create your uh, regression model uh, based on your training set. And once your regression model is available, then you add that particular one onto your uh, test set. So once that is done, you would like to see it uh, in graphical uh, uh, pattern, right? So uh, in R, we have a ggplot algorithm, uh, so a lot uh, library, and uh, this uh, particular uh, library uh, draws the uh, graph onto your uh, machine. 
So, uh, you know, again, it's very uh, simple. First, you define a GM point, what kind of uh, data you are going to uh, leverage for drawing that uh, graph. And then again, uh, you define what kind of line you would like to see. And then you define the title for X axis and uh, Y axis. So here, how many lines of code we have written so far? Two, uh, three, three and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten lines of code is more than uh, actually uh, sufficient uh, to draw a simple linear regression model. It might be a bit difficult for uh, all of you to understand our code. If that is the case, feel free to uh, you know avoid these things as of now. But I just wanted to show you that you know uh, writing machine learning algorithm is pretty simple, and within 10 to 20 lines of code, you can be done. That's the only objective, and that's why I have got this uh, you know uh, line of code over here for your reference. Uh, 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 simple linear uh, uh, regression so far, and there is another thing that is uh, multiple uh, linear regression. So simple linear regression, uh, this is a formula, y equals to b0 plus b1 x1. So if you have only one variable, then simple linear regression model is sufficient enough. But uh, you can go for multiple linear regression model in case if you have so many independent variables. Uh, I will tell you one quick example. In case if you would like to calculate apartment value, so your apartment value, it certainly depends on area, the locality, and different uh, kind of entity it has got, OK? So the apartment value becomes your dependent variable, your area, locality, and amenities become independent variable. And this particular uh, uh, you know, uh, we should go for multiple uh, linear regression model. Why? Because we have uh, multiple independent variables over here. Uh, we have seen, uh, uh, I told you earlier that data cleanup activity is most important in machine learning. Let you have a, a data uh, wherein you have very first column as profit, second one is R&D uh, expenditure, third one is how, uh, how much amount is getting spent on to admin related activities, fourth column is marketing spent, and um, uh, fifth column, uh, last one is uh, state. So, uh, and we can certainly learn, uh, uh, I mean, develop our machine learning model onto profit, R&D spend, admin, and marketing. Why? Because it's a numerical data. So if it is numerical uh, data, no issues. But it is in a textual uh, format, then it is very uh, difficult. We have to somehow convert straight into numerical one. And this kind of data, we call it as a categorical uh, variable. So how should we clean up this data? Here, what we do uh, for state, divide it into two different, uh, you know, column. Where in New York, uh, if it is New York, then it becomes one. Otherwise, it becomes zero. So in machine learning, everything is either zero or one. So based on that, we can introduce dummy variable as well. And once we have it in place, afterwards, uh, it is very uh, easy to, apply, you know, people lean regression model. Uh, let me just want to. Five more minutes. Okay. So we should uh, build a, a model. So, so uh, say that we have got y as a dependent variable, and we have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, 6, and 7 as independent variable. So, what is our strategy to build a particular model? Are we going to utilize each and every data uh, point, whether it is really required? Is uh, no actually uh, each and every independent variable it has got its own significance level, okay, and it has got its own uh, weightage as well. So if uh, weightage is more, then you should uh, consider that particular dependent variable uh, independent variable. If uh, weightage is less, then you shouldn't be considering it. So we'll see it. Uh, what are the different uh, methods for uh, developing a model? Uh, very first one is all in one. Second is backward elimination, forward is selection, bidirectional uh, elimination, and score comparison. I will quickly get it up because only the second one, that is backward elimination, is uh, mostly used and uh, it is of uh, significance for our discussion. So, yes, what we do, uh, if we have 10 data, uh, data points, we consider all of them. 
Why? Because uh, it might be required because of our prior knowledge. But that is highly unlikely. Typically, uh, we don't use all the variables. Uh, typically, we go for uh, building a model using backward selection. So what do in backward selection? The first thing which we do is we consider all those 10 data points. Okay. And one by one, we, we remove them. And we will see whether uh, uh, our model uh, belongs to that particular significance level or not. So here's the five different uh, steps you know we should follow our backward elimination very first one is uh, define the significance level uh, to play into the model typically we go ahead with the uh, uh, five percent that is 0 0.05 and we our model with all possible uh, variables or uh, we call it as a predictor as well and then see whether our you know uh, significance uh, whether that particular predictor or variable lies between that five percent significance level or, or not doesn't belong to that 5%, we should remove it. Likewise, we keep removing one by one all those variables which are actually uh, not required, and I will show it to you through code how, how actually we do it. The selection. In forward selection, it is just reverse of the backward selection. In uh, uh, forward selection, we just continue with one variable, and then we keep on adding more and very more and more variable, and then we check the fitment of uh, our model whether it uh, it has that particular significance level uh, with five percent or not. If not, then we remove it. If yes, then we keep it. We go. We can go for bidirectional elimination. This is highly unlikely, so I will just keep this. And the last one is all possible model. Uh, this is again highly unlikely because in case if you have 10 columns, that means we, we are going to build 1,023 uh, models. And that is uh, uh, highly unlikely, but I have just skipped it uh, here for your uh, knowledge. Back to polynomial regression. Uh, we have two more minutes. I would like to uh, you know uh, get it done in next two to three minutes. So I've seen simple linear regression. That is y equals to by b0 plus b1x1. The second one is multiple uh, linear regression. And the third one is polynomial linear regression. So this is all about polynomial regression, guys. You know, If you have your data points, which has a curve, then simple linear regression or multiple linear regression is not, not going to solve your purpose. So and, you know, this, this particular formula, we cannot apply it over here because uh, uh, this multiple linear regression is in a straight curve, a straight line. Simple linear regression is again a straight line. But with polynomial regression, we can go for this particular curve because of this do x1 square thing. I okay. have uh, data points lined up like this. We should consider a uh, polynomial regression. Uh, I will take because decision tree is uh, something which will require another uh, finite. So uh, I think I have a lot many other uh, slides now. I have 40, 48 only, but I have 40 more slides. I don't think I will be able to cover all of them. I will take a pause if you have, uh, if you guys have any questions, and then we can, you know, wrap up this session. As of now, we are just uh, having a discussion on to clustering regression and other types of uh, uh, you know machine learning model. But the one which is really uh, interesting is neural uh, network and deep learning. Uh, that is the essence of machine learning. Entire world is mad about those two things. In case if you guys are interested in next or to next session, I can certainly uh, cover those things as well. But these are the basics of uh, machine learning and uh, model, and we should understand those things. A uh, new network and deep learning is uh, again uh, pretty interesting, and this is what we should know. Uh, but to cover it up uh, later on. Uh, in case if you guys have any any questions, feel free to uh, ask me, or else we'll wrap it up. Question is this: is deep, So, uh, can you share this recording and also the uh, the session day one recording as well? Uh, definitely, I will do it. Yeah. Uh, no questions, uh, Sangha here, Sachin again. Uh, just to add on uh, two more points. Um, can you go to uh, the first slide where we were showing uh, a salary versus uh, uh, 
Yeah, for just uh, for uh, everybody's awareness, see what we are trying to do achieve here is have uh, a uh, yeah, number of years of experience data and what was the salary. So I want to predict what we, what will be the salary for say a ten years experience guy. Okay, so then the plot with that data I will get uh, this plus marks. Okay, but how do I predict? So if I need to predict somewhere, I need to draw a line which can cross. Best one will be if that line which crosses me, it should pass through all the uh, uh, like data points, right? So that is very ideal condition. If not, then what is the best one? What is the nearest value which we can get? What is the, which basically, we should have a minimal value between the uh, 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 the the line which we are trying here. That line is nothing but to indicate what it will predict. Okay, say if I put two, two experience and uh, what, uh, if you the line with that one, then it will it can I can easily predict that what is the uh, salary. So suppose if I have this is only two parameters. Say if I need to consider what will be the salary with a .NET person or like with a, a Google uh, Cloud experience. So those are multi variables. So for that you need to go with a different uh, algorithm. If you have data points where it it cannot you cannot draw a linear line, then if it is something uh, like a, a curve curve involved, right? Then you can need to go polynomial one, and in the either you can go with a square or even you can use a square root. A square also, if you plot a, a square, like a data with a square root, then that also can provide the similar structure. So based on the data, what we have, uh, we can decide. What of uh, um, algorithm we need to select? So basically, it's like try to predict based on what data we have, and cost function and all is there. So I guess Sachin will be covering that later. Let me. And uh, thanks for pitching in. You are absolutely uh, right. While uh, this kind of all those things, this is one of the typical behavior of data. Likewise, we we can have different types of uh, uh, behavior. You know, uh, we can have data like this. We we have data, you know, uh, uh, nice as well. So there are so many things. You know, this is another type of distribution. So we, if it is like this, then it becomes a straight line. But if you have your data points like this, then we should go for logistic regression. But anyway, the upcoming slide, guys, and, and probably next we will we'll, we'll cut this things up. So in case if there are no further questions, guys, uh, thank you uh, so much for joining in this uh, call. Thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.